Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, sturgeon season just opened. Thought I was going to go uh, sturgeon fishing this weekend, but it's about 12 degrees outside, and we're supposed to get a big snowstorm today, so that's not going to happen. Uh, so I figured I'd go through all my gear, get it all cleaned up, get it ready for this year, explain to you guys what I have, how I use it, where I use it, when I use it, techniques, that kind of stuff. And uh, got me a river anchor here, uh, homemade river anchor, the guy I made up and gave to me. So uh, we're going to go through, modify that, and get that all welded up, and uh, yeah, get ready for the season. So stick around. If you like the video, let me know. Let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, enjoy. It's about 19 degrees outside. It's been snowing all day. I'm not going to get any fishing done. So I figured I'd go through all my sturgeon gear. I get a lot of questions from people. Hey, what do you use? How do you get set up? That kind of stuff. So I figured I'd go over everything I have. What I do, this is just me personally. A lot of people have their own different ways, but this is what I do. This is what works for me. So first off, this is my rod. This is a ugly stick tiger, seven foot, medium heavy action uh, boat rod. It's rated 30 to 60 pounds for line. I'm running, I have 200 yards of 80 pound braid on here. Uh, my reel is a Penn Warfare 20 L W L C uh, the gear ratio is 5.1 to 1 um, I have reeled in 2 foot sturgeon with this and I have reeled in 9 foot sturgeon with this so uh, it's fairly fairly cheap setup I think for the rod reel and line everything I didn't pay over $200 so uh, pens are really good rods I love having a line counter on it I like knowing Knowing my depth relative to where I'm at, kind of get an idea where the fish are holding. So that is that is the rod and reel that I use. Um, I have I have a little sturgeon bag with me. It's got all my gear in it that I take. Inside of it, I have my weights. I use cannonball sinkers. I carry sixes and I carry tens depending on the current, depending on my depth. Sometimes I've, I've doubled up, ran two sixes before. Sometimes a 10 works great. It just kind of all depends on the current you're at, rather how, you know, how deep you are, how far out you are. As long, as long as your bait's holding on the bottom, you're good. So inside my bag of goodies, I gotta have a pen to mark the fish, right? I have a bag of slide swivels. These slide swivels, I use this right here. They're actually on your line above, above your swivel for your your hook. These you want, and then from here you'll attach your cannonball sinker, and then of course your swivel here and your leader goes off the end of that. So inside my bag, always have a good knife, good, uh, good, nice, sharp fillet knife. This one is a CUDA titanium. Works, works for me. Gets everything down I need to. Uh, let's have a pair of scissors. I uh, usually carry a pair of nail clippers. These work great for cutting fishing line. A sharpener, a knife, uh, tape measure. Those are a must when you're sturgeon fishing. Uh, the regulation length is 42 to 54 inches, and that is from the the V in the bottom of the tail to the snout. Um, anything over 50, 54 inches, it is unlawful to remove from the water, so be careful. And hook-wise, I use a 7-aught Mustad hooks. 
Uh, they are barbless and stainless steel. Remember if you're fishing the Columbia River, salmon, steelhead, sturgeon, we have to go barbless. So I will show you how I set up. So when I go sturgeon fishing, like I said, I use a number seven, or excuse me, I use a seven aught barbless stainless hook, and I run 130 pound Dacron line for my leader. Uh, sturgeon snouts are very tough. I run 80 pound braid on my reel, but you gotta toughen up your leader because if you catch one with significant size, that's gonna rub back and forth and it will actually break your line. So I go with 130 pound Dacron. Um, doing my hooks, you can buy them pre-tied. I like to tie my own. This gives me something to do. Uh, when I do, I tie a just normal clinch knot. Uh, for those of you who don't know, run your line through through your hook, through your eye. I'm gonna wrap it about five to seven times. Something like that. On the bottom here, you got a loop right over the eye. You wanna go through that loop right there, and then up and around and back through the loop you've created. Hold that tag, and Keeping your line tight. This is a very good knot. I have never, never had one of these break, never come off. Just like that. That's what I run. Then always keep your scissors. At the top here, you got a little. I like leaving a little bit, not a lot. But leave a little bit on there just for slipping. And you can pull and pull and pull. This knot is not going to go anywhere. And I leave, I usually leave about a foot and a half for leader. That way I can um, do half hitches around my bait. Um, rather you're using row mop, heron, squid, whatever it is um, that you use. I like leaving a little bit. So if you don't have uh, any slide sinker or slide swivels, you can use a regular large swivel, just like this, run your line through it. Then I'll run a bead, and then I'll tie on to another swivel. This bead's here, it goes over your knot and protects it. That swivel right there is where I hook my weights, and I will show you that in just a second. This bottom swivel right here is where you hook your leader. So my setup, when it's completed, will look just like just like this. I have my weight on this top swivel here, my bead. My other swivel to my leader, to my hook. And that, that, that is sturgeon fishing. It's very simple. It's very, it's, it's fun. You will never, <laughs> you'll, you'll never want to catch a crappie again when you hook a nine foot fish and uh, reel that in for an hour or so. Uh, so my bait that I prefer I use squid. Uh, like I said, you can use row mop. You can use, you know, pickled herring. You can use um, salmon row. I actually use salmon row to catch salmon with. So I don't know, but people do it. Uh, use shad when the sh when the shad are running. Shad are great bait to catch sturgeon, especially oversized. Uh, for that, I actually use a 10 aught hook, and I'm I'm usually running, you know, between an 8 and 12 inch shad at one time. So, a little little bit different setup, but for shakers, keepers, oversized, pretty much anything I want to fish for, 
a seven knot hook works fantastic for me. Um, I use squid. I don't. I don't use. You. You can get stuff. Uh, it's called squid candy. It's pickled squid. I've used it. I've caught fish with it. I don't prefer it. Uh, I prefer going to the store. You can buy just straight, uncleaned, frozen squid. I think I bought two pounds for seven dollars, something like that. Uh, I bring it home, throw up the sink, defrost it, and then once it's defrosted out, I take you know about five little Ziploc bags and sort them out. You can usually get between 8 and 12 squid in each bag and from there they go directly to the freezer when I am ready to go sturgeon fishing the night before I take a bag out I throw it in the sink let it defrost wake up in the morning and I'm good to go so uh, let me know what you guys think uh, I'm gonna be making some videos some more about the stuff what I use different tactics I use uh, besides sturgeon um, but for sturgeon, that's that's it's simple. That's what it is. Get you get you a rod, get you a reel, put some some good heavy line on it. Get you some hooks and some bait, and go find a hole and throw your line in it. So uh, if you guys like these, of course, give me the thumbs up. Uh, if you have comments, questions, anything like that, I will be more than happy to help you in any way I can. I don't know everything there is about fishing. I'm just giving you my techniques, the method that I use. It works for me. So come up with your own, add your own, take a little bit from everyone, and uh, fish on.